Good morning and welcome. I'm Nancy McLemore. Would you please join with me in the call to worship? Come, all that are faithful and all that seek faith. The symbol of new hope and spirit shines, the spirit of peace. We now have a promise fulfilled by God. Amen. may be seated. Good morning, and those of you who've either watched or been here present with us for these Sundays in Advent know that as we light the Advent wreath each week, a different candle each time, we do so with a reading just prior, a reading from Isaiah 62, 1 and 2. So I read this, and then we'll invite you to join Lance and Mary as they lead us in our responsive reading. 
The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Today we light the candle of grace. Wherever people have fallen short or fallen by the wayside, let this light shine. Wherever there are people longing to be accepted and hearts longing to be heard, let this light shine. Wherever pilgrims are searching, are searching for a home, for a home let, let this, this light, light shine. shine. And Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Let this light shine. Got a lot going on this morning. Welcome. So good to see you here. Anna's family is here. You, you should remember what happened the last time Anna was here back in July. Uh, she, she saved my life, that girl. So proud of her. Spencer, it's good to see you. Southside's a great church. I go to prayer meeting every Wednesday night online, have been for how long, Tim? A year and a half. It's really good. But boy, there's a lot of tough things happening to our church family. You've all been through things. We suffer together, we lift each other up. Southside's a great place to be a, a part of the gospel of Christ, where we forgive each other, we're all sinners, we lift each other up. This is a great place to be. Faye and Bonnie did breakfast for us last week. I want you to meet Unhi Park, Dr. Laurie Middell, they're both doctors from University of Montevallo who are our guest musicians. And then Gavin Bell is on percussion back there. And Megan, Sarah, Anna, Nancy, the voice of WBHM, Dr. Banks, our beloved Dr. Banks, Jane and Martha, Landon, Zarian. Zarian, you want to show us? I ask them to be festive. Come on, let's see. Festive, beautiful, Gabe, Sarah, Marcus, Anna, and Tessa. This is a great Sunday. Yeah, thank you. This is a great Sunday, and I think we're doing a hymn next. Is that right, Dr. Kelly? 107, thank you, thank you.
The Old Testament reading is Psalm chapter 80, verses 1 through 7. Hear us, shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Awaken your might, come and save us. Restore us, O God. Make your face shine on us that we may be saved. How long, Lord God Almighty, will your anger smolder against the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have made them drink tears by the bowlful. You have made us an object of derision to our neighbors and our enemies mock us. Restore us, God Almighty. Make your face shine on us that we may be saved. second reading today is found in the Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter, and I'll be reading verses 39 through 55. This is on this fourth Sunday of Advent, the time that we look to the Annunciation, 
Mary's visit to Elizabeth, and then also Mary's response to all that that meant, not only to her, but to, whole, to the whole world. In honor of the gospel reading, if you are able to stand, please do so, as it's read. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is a child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in, your, in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has, set, has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. seated. And as you are, we'll come before the Lord with our prayers, prayers for those that are on our hearts and minds today, and prayers for those who are gathered here. Oh Lord, we gather in this place today, a place dedicated to for the worship of the one true and living God. It is in that manner that we come here to lift our voices, to celebrate, to sing, to sing joyfully, to express our gratitude to you for all that you have done, both what you have done in the past and what you are doing today and what you will do in the future. We thank you, Lord that we are your children, that you have called us to follow you. And as we have done so, you have made known your truths in greater ways. You have revealed things to us as we journey on our own paths, our journey that enlightens us as we go, but also compels us because of your love toward us to care for those that are around us, to be compassionate, to always seek justice, to do those things that lift others up, to engage in the life of those close to us, whether it be an individual or whether it be a group in our community. Oh Lord, we come with these hopes, these desires, these requests, and as we do, we come asking that you would mend our hearts, cleanse our hearts from the sin that is there. Make us whole. May we see even the dark recesses of our minds and hearts. And as we look with great introspection 
that we can see where we have wronged you. There have been times that we have walked away from things we know you have nudged us to do. Times you have called us to come closer or times you have asked us to go and to do things in your name. Oh Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have to gather and to know that as we do on this fourth Sunday of Advent that we lift our voices with great anticipation and excitement of what you are doing even now in our world. And we give you thanks for what you have done in providing a Savior, one who has forgiven us, but also one who brings joy and meaning and fullness to life. Lord, we also lift up to you the concerns that are on our hearts. For those who are ill within our membership and those around that we know of, family and friends, people who are suffering and struggling today, those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, especially at this time of year, it is so hard to deal with a loss when everything around says to be happy. We thank you, Lord, that as we call upon you that you hear our prayers for those that we love and care for, those we walk alongside, we pray for those who are facing terminal illnesses, struggling even today. Be with them. Be with those survivors of the devastating storms of last week. For the losses they sustain and for those as they mourn the loss of so many loved ones. Lord, may we find ways to help in using the resources that we have been granted and blessed with. Oh Lord, we commit all of this worship to you. May it bring honor and glory unto you. And may, through this, others hear the joy that you bring to our lives, a joy that is available to all who embrace your love, mercy, and grace. It comes through Jesus Christ. And even as he taught his followers to pray, we now also offer our prayers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Dr. Gown has already given you a word of welcome, but I wanted to also extend that to you and to thank him for, particularly for making mention of all these that are, that are our guests today, the musicians. Thank you all for being here. All of those who are helping to fill in too um, in our uh, choir this today. And then, uh, of course, under our esteemed leadership of Ms. Hazlett and Dr. Gannon, we thank you for being here. Also, I uh, wanted to um, let you know that maybe one or two of them will be here on Christmas Eve as we ha share in that service together this Friday evening as well. We are, as Dr. Gannon mentioned, it's a good place, a great place here. And I hope that today, with the music you heard and also the folks that you see here, that you know that there is joy experienced. There's a sense of hope for today and tomorrow, a sense of purpose in what we do, that we do try to exhibit those things that God has called us to do or the, uh, the characteristics he's called us to embody, and in so doing, that we welcome others into the, this fellowship. This month, we've been marching through the season of Advent. Each Sunday, a little bit more, as we've been in the Gospel according to Luke. And today, we look again at one of those really familiar, famous, often some written into various different arrangements throughout the years, the Magnificat, as Mary expressed the joy she had over being able to be the one who would carry the Christ child and also give birth to the Christ child. Now, we know what joy a child brings most of the time. Isn't that right, Philip? Most of the time, they bring us great joy. And it's because they do, we see the new life, and we see the curiosity, and we see all that is a part of who they are beginning to bud forth and have life itself. Unfortunately, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus and we look toward and anticipate his coming again, but not only that something out in the future, the fact that he comes to us continually, all the time he is within us. He comes to us and nudges us and says, engage in this. May my love for you compel you to do this also. During Christmas, a lot of that joy gets pushed aside. Even during COVID, as we've come back and begun to go out and do things, it's caused us to have a bit of stress, a bit of anxiety, a little bit of pressure because of things, and it ramps up every week, drawing ever closer to Christmas. And sometimes we can't even celebrate. The pressure's so heavy we can't celebrate, or maybe it's the pressure or the concern about what we're going to do when we deal with the reality of the loss of the empty place at the table. We want Christmas to be exactly, or this season to be exactly what we think it should be and what it could be. I read a story some years ago about two little boys that wanted to make sure that was going to happen for them. These two adolescents were seen in a department store and they had this big mail bag dragging it through the store and they were making all kinds of commotion. They were bumping in to customers. And I found out something as I get older when people bump into me, it, it irritates me more than it used to. Now it seems to be a little bit more of a problem for me. But these two boys were dragging us through, and the manager came over and said, boys, what are you doing? You can't be doing that. You know that you know, your mom and dad might be around. I hope they are. But if they're not, you know, Santa Claus is making a list. He's checking it. You know, if you don't behave, he's not going to come and see you. One of the boys, I guess the brain behind the, <laughs> the effort, said to the man, said, that's what you think, mister. 
Who do you think we've got in this bag? He was, they were going to make sure that they experienced Christmas in the way that they wanted to. They were going to wrap it up and put it in a bag and bring it with them. And I think many times we do the same thing, but yet we bag up the pieces that really don't have that much to do with Christmas or with Advent. We pick it up, we bring it with us, we pack it in our bags, and we think that when we unload that bag, when we take all those things out, it's going to be a wonderful experience. Well, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we hear a beautiful story. Perhaps the most beautiful story of Mary and Elizabeth. Mary, a young girl just in her early teens, who has had a visit of the angel, saying to her, you will bear a son because the Spirit of the Most High will come upon you. And you will give birth, and this child will be the Savior of the world. Mary did what I think most of us would do. She thought about it a minute and said, I better ask somebody about this. And so what does she do? In haste, she leaves. She leaves and goes to someone that was wise, someone that she could trust, someone that she knew would not steer her wrong. She goes to Elizabeth. She goes there and she asks, or wants to ask her about all of this, but even before she can speak, we know what happened in the reading today, that as Elizabeth or as Mary came into the house, she spoke and the baby inside of Elizabeth's womb leapt. You know, if you ever think about it, these two women were the first prophets of the New Testament. They prophesied. They prophesied of what would be, and they received messages of what would be. And they spoke boldly about what it would be. And it's no wonder because Elizabeth, being the wife of Zechariah, who was a priest, she knew all these things, and she was on up in years. But yet, she explained it to Mary in a way that Mary understood. And then it's as though Mary embraces all that she has heard, And she launches into this joyous, joyous song. She begins to sing or to speak and sing in a way that that causes Elizabeth to certainly stand and wonder in awe of what she is saying. Because she says, God has favored me. God has favored me. Now, I'm sorry, but for most teenage girls, that would not be something you would consider to be favored. That would be a heavy load to bear. A wonderful load to bear in the end, but still a heavy load to bear. And she does. She does not run away from that. She stays there with Elizabeth, and she listens to her and talks with her and certainly certainly she hears things that Elizabeth had experienced in life as well. In these two women we see the epitome of what it means to be a joyous follower of God. They were excited. They were joyous. They knew something new was happening. And that's the, that's the main part of what we experience here, is that there is something new that is taking place, something that is different. And when we understand that and embrace that, we have a way of seeing what God has done and can live with joy and excitement even when stress and pressures of life and things that are not going the way we think they would, broken dreams that come our way, illnesses that tend to 
push us down to the point that we feel as though we cannot go on. What Mary reminds us is the good and great things that God has done. Not only what he's done, and this, the way this language is used in this perfect tense, it's though is she recognizes what has been done, what is being done, but also what will be done. And that is what she is focusing on. And whatever happens, whatever happens, she is good with that. Certainly, these two women are blessed, they're favored, and they're filled with newness. This newness of God's activity in their life, stirring something within them. You know, you, you remember when we, had, we would have the revivals years back? And there would be oftentimes an evangelist that would speak. And, and a lot of times, well, many of us would rededicate our life. And we would be filled with a sense of, of purpose and joy that maybe we didn't have before. Now, whether or not it was authentic, I don't know. It may have been just the excitement of the moment, but you understand what I'm saying. Well, these two women experienced something that was likened to that, but real, permanent, pervasive. And it all comes because of two a visit by angels, but also two children that would be born. Elizabeth and John the Baptist are, in a way, it's sort of an end of an age. And Mary and Jesus, the beginning of a new. Something that's totally different than what they had known, although all of these, these canticles that we read in, in Luke seem to have come from those early Christian, the early Christian community, what they would sing, what they would share. And so it's out of that that we understand what Mary is also experiencing. In the early Christian community, those Christians that were oftentimes grouped together as the poor ones, not because they didn't have means, perhaps, but because they could not trust in their own strength. They had to rely on something beyond themselves to be able to, to live. And that is exactly what we hear in these words today. That Jesus also says that to us, the word comes to us, and we accept it as such, and it brings joy and purpose and meaning to life. William Willimon, dean of the, former dean of the chapel at Duke University, had said this, that, you know, it's, or asked this question, don't you find it interesting that when the great Lord, the creator of the universe, the one who hung the stars in the heavens and set the planets spinning in their courses, when this great God chose to come among us, he chose to come to us as a baby. And when that baby grew up, he told those who would be his disciples, you can't enter this kingdom unless you turn and become as a little child. You know, there's a, there's a great image there of the dependence on God for what we, who we are, what we have, our understanding of life, our way of navigating through life in a way that still can, can live in the moment and with the newness and to see the joy that comes. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we look to that day when we remember the celebration of, of Christ's birth. But more importantly, too, is the looking within today. It was that dedication, devotion that Mary had that enabled her to hear even this angel speak to her. I wonder how many times we have missed opportunities because of our lack of attention. Too busy planning parties for Christmas, too busy buying gifts, that we miss what's really important, the lives of those around us and their ability to see and embrace the living Christ. 
May we spend this year being an example, living it and celebrating the gift of God's grace, that unmerited favor that every person has the opportunity to receive. It is in him that we found, find life and life abundant. Would you pray with me, please? Oh, Lord, we pray that you would speak to our own hearts, that we would remember the truth of who we chose to follow after being touched by your Spirit. Oh, Lord, may we live our life with joy. May we celebrate the favor that we have because of who you are. May we embrace it with all that we are and have and can be. In your name I pray, amen. Our hymn of promise today, hymn number 127, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. This is an opportunity, I'll be down front for you to to come if you would like prayer or if you would like to to, uh, be a part of this church or if you would like to say, what is this about this joy or this person that we celebrate, the one who has come to take away the sins of the world? Today, as we prepare to go out, I want to make a mention of a few things about this week. It is the week leading up to Christmas, and so we'll want to make sure that we're uh, aware of that. And on on Friday evening, of course, I want to stress that that we do have the uh, Christmas uh, Christmas Eve candlelight communion service here. It's always a well-attended service, or at least pre-COVID it was. 
and we hope that even with this um, Omicron uh, variant that it will not be such that we can't come and be a part of this service together. The, um, we'll have, um, have that and some of our folks from the choir will be here as well on, on uh, Friday evening. The only activities we have this week will be our deacons uh, virtual meeting, virtual deacons meeting on Monday evening. The rest of the time, hopefully you will spend with your family and that you will enjoy this week, that you'll live it with joy and, and have a sense of celebrating the one who has come into the world, that all might receive the grace gift, the gift of salvation, but also the gift of Christ within us all the time, giving us a life that is free, but also abundant. We will hope and pray that that is the case as we go. After the choir sings our choral benediction, I will speak a word of benediction for us as we go out. Before I pronounce the benediction, let me thank you all again for being here. 
sharing with us, all who are here today. And we look forward to seeing you again. Hope this is not the last time. Easter. Well, and you can come before then. <laughs> As we go out, receive this blessing. From a little babe that was born and placed in a manger. To one who lived and died a cruel death the one that was buried and was resurrected to take away the sins of the world. Go forth with joy, knowing that Christ goes before you. Christ is beneath you. Christ is above you. Christ is behind you. Christ is within you. Go forth in his name. Amen. Thanks for your work.